Hi guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing my least favorite books in 2022. The last video I did was all the books that I DNF'd. These are going to be the books that were um, ones that I was either really excited for or that I had heard really good things about or I, or I had read the first book in the series and was really excited for the second book um, that ended up just letting me down. Um, that I ended up not DNFing, I did finish them, but I ended up not loving. Um, I do only have seven of them. Um, so I'm, I just went through each month, my Goodreads for each month, and just picked out the books that um, really stood out to me that were just kind of eh and that I didn't really love. So I'm going to go through those. So the first one is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I was really excited for this book. Um, I follow Victoria Lee on Instagram, and so I kind of was able to follow along with her through like the writing process and like the publishing process and um she seems like a really great human being and I was, I was just I was really excited for it everything that she posted on Instagram and everything seemed like it was gonna be right up my alley it's supposed to be like dark academia it's sapphic uh, it's like a murder mystery type thing it's set in a um in a boarding school which I love so all the like different components were seemed to be coming together to make, to make like the perfect puzzle so when the book came out um I was I finished it like I said but I was really let down by it I didn't love it I want to say I gave it like three stars um I don't know I guess technically it kind of is dark academia it's set in a school um the the girls like think that they are um witches and that they so the main character I think her name was Alex um her ex-girlfriend died and she thinks that it is the ghost of one of the um like first girls to go to the school um there's like this whole legend surrounding three or four women who first went to the school and like all died I believe or one killed the others I don't remember but there's like this whole lore surrounding these women and so the main character Alex or Alex might be the side character I don't remember but the main character um she believes that this ghost or spirit killed her ex-girlfriend and so she ends up having like a mental breakdown and she leaves school for I don't remember if it's like over the summer or if she ends up like leaving in the middle of the semester she comes back for her senior year I believe and um all the seniors in the school have to write like a thesis paper um in order to graduate and her counselor tells her that she's not allowed to do her thesis on these, this lore on these witches because she doesn't think it's good for like her mental health. Um, and there ends up being a new girl in at the school, but also staying in this dorm, um, like in this house, uh, with the rest of the girls. And her and the main character end up um, hooking up basically. And the new girl's really weird. She has written a very famous um or like well-known book I don't remember if it's a, a single book or a series um and so she's really known she's really popular uh when she comes to the school and the main character uh is kind of wondering like why is she giving me all this attention and again they all like see themselves as witches and they do um spells and um all you know all the witchy stuff and um, I was really let down by the ending. So the, as I talk about it more now, I remember the like main, a good chunk of the book was pretty good. Um, I want to say it probably would have, could have been a four star. Um, it wasn't as like spooky as I would have liked. Um, and I didn't get the dark academia vibes as much as I would have liked, but I would have given it, I think a solid four stars, except for the ending. Um, I don't want to give it away, but I just, the way it ended, I did not like, um, it was like the the book was up here and then the ending just brought it down here and um the ending was kind of rushed and it wasn't really explained very well and it was kind of like a stupid reason for everything to have happened um so yeah I just started off well didn't end great three stars um so the next book is All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata and this was, I got this one, it was um, an arc from NetGalley. And since, since the book was actually um, published, I have heard so many things, so many people really love this book. Um, Olivia Rizalate, um, she 
loves this book. She talks about Mariana Zapata all the time. Um, I did not love this book. I, the premise sounded interesting. Um, but the book is like super long. I think it's like five or 600 pages, I think. Um, and I guess the, most of the book is like slow burn. And that was my first clue. It was an arc when I read it. So, and I don't typically read synopsis. I just kind of go into the book. And had I known that it was slow burn, I would have known that it wasn't for me because I don't like slow burn. I can do a little bit of it, not 600 pages worth. Like I said, I'm more like get to the point. Um, so All Roads Lead here is about a woman, and again, I don't remember her name, who goes back to Colorado, Arizona, I think maybe Colorado. Uh, or maybe it was the Pacific Northwest. It might have been the Pacific Northwest somewhere. I don't remember. But she goes back to like her hometown where she grew up with her mom. Her mom has since passed away. She is going back in order to do like these hiking trails that she used to do with her mom as a way to kind of connect, reconnect with her and to feel like her, um, like her spirit, I guess, like to feel like she's connected to her again. And she ends up renting this apartment um, above like a garage. And it's not until she moves into the apartment that she realizes that it's actually a teenage boy who's rented her the apartment without his dad knowing. And so eventually the dad finds out, turns out the dad is the town sheriff, I think, or something. And he is a very like grumpy, surly, cold, non-talkative kind of guy. And so it's definitely like a grumpy sunshine kind of. Um, and so I think slowly over time they bond as the main character is kind of healing over her mom's passing and and like the trauma from her childhood um and he is recovering from the loss of his wife i think um i think it could have been good had it been shorter i'm mainly it's the slow burn thing for me it's the 600 pages like for them to just realize that they have feelings for each other um that's just not for me um so yeah and again unfortunately a lot of people really like this book i heard a lot of good things um so I'm intrigued by it, but I just know that if I try it again, it's just going to be the same thing. I'll get like 200 pages in and be like, okay, can we just, can this just happen already? Um, so yeah, that is why I ended up giving this one. Actually, I just realized that I did not include this on my DNF list, my last video, but I did DNF this. Um, so it's actually supposed to be on that vlog, not this one, but it was the least favorite. I was looking forward to it when I first, um, Heard about it or requested it from Nut Gallery. Um, but technically, this should have been on that list. But yeah, that is it for that one. Okay, so the next book is Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. Um, this was actually nominated for a Goodreads Award. Um, it was good. I think I gave it three, two, actually, I gave it two stars. Um, it would have been a solid three star if the ending had not been what it was. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but this is, um, it has a really interesting premise. Um, it's like women in this small town start going missing or one woman start goes missing and then slowly more are going missing. Um, so it starts off with um, a woman named Shelby who goes, is supposedly abducted um, on her like morning run or a, she's running all night, I don't remember. She's on a run and she ends up going missing and they don't know where she is. Not long after, um, another woman, Meredith, and her six-year-old daughter, Delilah, go missing. So now there's three girls missing, two women and a little girl, who all go missing. Um, for Shelby, her husband is accused, which is typical. Um, and then Meredith, like nobody knows what happened to her. Nobody knows what happened to the six-year-old daughter. Um, so they go, there's this like huge search that, that goes on and happens. They can't find her. Now it's 11 years later and all of a sudden um, Delilah is brought back and somehow like they find her in the woods. That's what it is. They find her in the woods and like somebody finds her in the woods and she's brought back to her, her dad and the dad is like overjoyed. Um, he's still sad that his wife is still missing. Um, they don't know what happened to the wife, but they're really happy that at least he has a daughter not back, back now. Um, and it's like the brother having to deal with his sister being back and all the attention she's getting. And he was very young. I think he was only like two or three when she disappeared. So she's been gone for most of his life. So him having to deal with that. And it goes back and forth between perspectives and timelines, I believe. 
So it's like the current timeline of the brother having to deal with everything. Um, and then I think the past timeline is Meredith. I think, I believe it's the mom, um, her timeline. And then there's also like the two neighbors who are really good friends uh, with um, Meredith and her husband. Um, and like there, there's some scenes from their perspective as well. And so in the end, like everybody's secrets are revealed and it shows what happened to these women. What happened to these women did not make sense to me at all. It was like really like extreme and it just didn't seem realistic at all. Um, I really liked the book up until that point. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's a good reads. It was nominated for um, for Best Mystery and Thriller for 2022. So people obviously liked it. Um, I don't know if I say that it deserves to win. Like I said, I didn't love the ending, but most of the book was really good. So the next book is going to be um, The Girl the Sea Gave Back. And this is the second book in the Sky and Sea series. The first book was The Sky and the Deep or Sky and the Deep. Uh, and I really liked that one. I want to say I gave that book four or five stars. Um, so I was really excited to get to the second book. I listened to the audiobook of the first one and then I immediately checked out from the library the second book um, because I was very excited. I really, really enjoyed the first book. Um, and these are written by Adrienne Young, who is an author I really love. She wrote the Fable series. She wrote Fable, Namesake. <sighs> I forget the name of the third book and then the, the like, I don't know if it's technically part of the series, but the newest book um, about the dad in that series just came out, which I'm really excited to read. Um, but I really like Adrian Young's writing. Fable, like I said, was a really good series. Um, so, and the uh, Sky in the Deep, like, was level with those. Really good, really loved it. Like I said, I flew through it. Um, it that book grabbed me from the first page. It's it's based on like Vikings and like Norse mythology, and um, I just, I really loved that one. I loved the romance in that one and like the, the way the world was built and um, the like adventure of it. Um, but the second book, it just immediately from the beginning, I could tell that it was different. It just didn't grab me the way the first book did. It seemed kind of disjointed and like choppy. Um, it's not told from the same, or it's not about the same like characters from the first book. It's kind of like adjacent to the first book and I just didn't love it. So um, yeah, that is that one. I, it might be good it, if I had pushed further in. I think I stopped it pretty quickly, maybe within the first less than 100 pages. So had I kept going, maybe it would have gotten better. Um, but this one was a big disappointment for me. Um, you could read, I think, The Sky in the Sea as a, uh, or Sky in the Deep. I think you could read as a um, like standalone. So if you do that, I highly suggest reading the first book. Like I said, the second book just was not it for me. So the next book was Caraval by Stephanie Garber. Uh, I had heard about these books. I actually think I have it sitting right here. Um, I had heard about these books for years. I don't even know when they came out, but I think they've been on a while. I, I know a lot of people have, I've heard a lot of people rave about them. Olivia, I think from Olivia Reads Lots, I really likes these books. Um, it was good. It wasn't great. Um, the, I think a lot of it was kind of confusing the whole thing with um Caraval and the games and um I forget the main character's name but trying to find her sister and like her sister is very like wishy-washy and like keeps running away from her and doesn't really care about her um and the dad is like very abusive and I don't know I just I didn't love it um I went in with really high expectations because so many people really liked it. Um, I, I have all of the books. I think there's three or four books in the series. So I'll definitely eventually continue them. Um, it wasn't bad. I want to say I gave it three stars. Um, but it was one that just didn't fully hit the mark. So the next book is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahirin. This is another one that people love. I don't remember if this is a Kindle Unlimited book or not. I believe so. I think I got it on Kindle Unlimited. Um, this is about... A woman who, I think, I want to say again, there's another one that I DNF'd, um, but that I was really looking forward to this year uh, because I know a lot of people really like it. I believe the woman starts off, the story starts off, she's like a pick, pickpocket, I think, um, or something like that. And she, the truth is that she's really a witch 
and there's like a witch hunter who's after her and I think the premise of the story is that somehow they end up she ends up having to marry him or he ends up having to marry her as a punishment I think that's what it is he ends up having to marry her as a punishment or something and he doesn't know that she's a witch and so eventually he finds out um I may eventually try it again just because I know a lot of people really like this book um but I know um um the channel I forget her her actual name but um the, there's a channel called Aphrodite Reads she doesn't post anymore her channel's still active um but she hasn't posted it in a while um but I follow her on Instagram but she has a rant video about um Serpent and Dove that is hilarious so I'll tag it below um but yeah I was really excited for this one and it just didn't really hit the mark for me it was kind of disjointed um it felt kind of rushed nothing was really explained um I didn't really love it Okay, so the last book on this series, I myself actually have a rant video on. I will tag that down below, so I'm not going to go too much into detail. But it is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. And this is going to be, a con I know, a controversial one because people love Allie Hazelwood. A lot of people really like this book. Um, last year, I read The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, and I did not love that one either. Um, I ended up DNFing. Or did I finish? I don't even remember if I, I think I did finish Love on the Brain. Um... Yeah, I did. I did. I finished and I gave it one star. Um, I did not love it. The main character was very, like, self-important and there was a lot of, like, internal mon monologue and she had this attitude that, like, everyone was always paying attention to her and any conversation that anybody was having had to be about her and she has this, like, preconceived, like, um, she swears that this, the main character, the main male characters like our arch nemesis and that they hate each other but in actuality it's like all one-sided and he has no idea that they're in that they're in this like war against each other and that they supposedly hate each other it's completely all like in her head and one-sided and um he's actually ends up being like a really nice guy even though he's kind of like the grumpy he's the grumpy to her sunshine um which is exactly how love hypothesis was i felt like this was basically just the love hypothesis in another field of like stem work and the only thing i really liked about this book was that it was set in like nasa or had to do with nasa that part was cool other than that i didn't like it at all um you can watch my rant video on it i will link it below and yeah those are some of the books that i did not love this year that were my least favorites of the year and i do have my favorites my favorites of the year coming as my next video so i will see you guys then please uh like this video comment down below and subscribe